Hey guys, Ashley with Amari. So today we are going to talk about your lymphatic massages. Now in every video that I do, I talk about the lymphatic massages pertaining to whatever's in the video, right? But I realize I've never done a video, or maybe I have, but it was a long time ago, on just lymphatic massages. So let's start with this. Drainage massage, lymphatic massage, and manual lymphatic drainage are three different things. Drainage massage is where they cut you open, rub the crap out of you, use wooden rollers, all kinds of crazy stuff, and drain blood out of your body. This is not fluid. This is not lymphatic drainage. This does not help with swelling, although they say it does, but it just creates more fibrosis because it temporarily takes the fluids that you need out of your body and your body needs those fluids to heal. So again, drainage massage is not manual lymphatic drainage, should not be done post-surgery, is not what you need. Yes, I understand it's done everywhere. Yes, I understand Real Self, YouTube, all the people in Miami, all the people in Columbia, all those people do the drainage massage. I understand that. But guys, I urge you, check the credentials because the people who are doing drainage massage are either licensed massage therapists who are violating their license because you're not supposed to be doing any cutting open of incisions or handling any bodily fluids, number one. Um, number two, they're not certified. Just because they've been doing it forever and they're from Colombia or they're Spanish does not mean that they know what they're doing. And number three, the people in Miami do it because they get away with it and it's cheap. So again, drainage massage or lymphatico drainage is not a thing. That's not real. That's not going to help you long term. That's not going to get you the results you want. And you know what? Maybe it will get you the results you want. Maybe you want that like hard plastic Barbie doll look. If that's what you want and you want to be snatched in the way that they say, that's fine. Go do that. I'm sure you can find somebody to do that in New York. You can find people like that in Jersey. You can definitely find people like that in Miami. So guys, if that's what you want to do, fine. But you're not going to look natural. You're not going to look soft. You're not going to get the results that you want. And it's going to cause you way more trouble in the long run. Those massages usually are like $60 an hour, $80 an hour, maybe, maybe at most. Um, they're not real, guys. Drainage massage, that's not a real thing. So that's number one. Lymphatic massage or lymphatic drainage. That can be done with any kind of massage where what's like, they can do cupping, they can do all kinds of things, right? So again, that's not targeting specific post-surgery. Now with that, again, just because they're doing it does not mean they're properly trained or certified. So they could be using cups on you and using way too much pressure. They could be, you know, rubbing, any kind of rubbing is not doing anything for your lymph system at all. There is no rubbing involved. There's no lo lotions, no mediums, no oils, nothing. So lymph massage or lymph drainage is not the same thing as what you need post-surgery. Manual lymphatic drainage. Hands-on manual lymphatic drainage. Looks, looks like this. It's a gentle pumping motion. Now, I am literally just placing my hand on the skin and pumping the skin and moving the skin itself. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with rubbing or like anything like this or like this. There's none of that. It's literally a pumping motion. And that's it. And that's all it should be. Anything with like rubbing or pressing or any of that, that's not doing anything for your lymph system, guys. I'm going to do a video, an extensive video in the next um, couple weeks on the anatomy of the lymph system and why that doesn't work. But I have mentioned it in my very first lymphatic drainage video on my IGTV. I suggest you go watch it. Um, I do mention why that doesn't work and how the lymph system works and, and all of that. Um, but what you need is manual lymphatic drainage, Vodder style. So what does Vodder mean? Vodder is the style or lineage of lymphatic drainage. So this guy, this doctor, Dr. Vodder, um, was in Europe and discovered this whole lymphatic drainage thing. Now out in Europe, they have actual lymphatic spas for cancer, for autoimmune, for kidney failure, for heart disease, for, for all the different things, or it's an actual clinic. So clinic of lymphology, um, which is obviously like clinic of the lymph system. Basically they will test your blood. They'll check your lymph. They have you on a specific diet. They have aqua size, which is great for the lymph system, getting into a pool, um, that aquatic water, that hydrostatic pressure. They've got everything there specifically for the lymph system. So Dr. Bowder discovered, like, not discovered, but like, you know, figured out the lymph system, figured out how it worked and how these little lymph vessels pump. Your lymph vessels do not have a central pump. They're not like the heart. It doesn't just magically work on its own. You pump your lymph fluid normally as a regular human being by getting up and moving. So not just running, not just walking, but like actual full body aerobic movement. So think yoga, think dance, 
Think swimming, think ballet, things like that, that have like, lots of open, big movements, getting your muscles to move because those little lymph vessels are attached deep in your muscle. And as your muscle squeezes, it pumps the lymph. Same thing with your skin, same thing with your bones. So it goes all the way down deep to your bones, like right to the, to the, um, the top of your bones. And even, you know, in your tissues and all of that. So this guy discovered this manual lymphatic drainage thing, manual lymphatic drainage massage to manually, which is the manual part, manually with the hands, pump the lymph system. Because again, it doesn't have its own pump. So actual true hands-on manual lymphatic drainage pumps the lymph system. It's a pumping motion done to the skin to get the vessels to dilate so that they can open up and suck the water back and then put it back into your blood and then it filters through your body and you pee it out. That's how that works. So the lymph fluid goes through your heart, your liver, and your kidneys and then goes out of the body. The liver is also, fun fact, um, a huge part responsible for producing all of those proteins, enzymes, all of the, the things that go into the lymph fluid. So there's that. Um, now, when we're talking about post-surgery, because that's what we're here to talk about, right? The, the drainage massages after surgery, you do not need a million of them. That's not how that works. You shouldn't need like 20 to 30 to 40. That's not how that works. If you are going to a place that's doing hands-on true manual lymphatic drainage, if you have a proper fitting compression garment, if you have the right foams and supplies, then you should only really need, even if you've had like a whole bunch of surgery, like... Let's say you did a full mommy makeover, right? So breasts, lipo 360, tummy tuck, and a BBL. You got the whole thing top to bottom done and lipo of the arms and lipo of the thighs. Let's just throw that in there. You're going to need about 12, maybe at most 15, like at most, like top max. But again, that's if you're going to a proper place where the people know what they're doing and it's actually working. So if you're going somewhere to get lymphatic drainage, Try to make sure that they're specialized in Vodder style because that's, you know, true hands-on pumping manual lymphatic drainage. Not drainage massage, not lymphatic massage, not lymphatic cupping, not any of that. Actual manual lymphatic drainage like we do at Amare. So that's the first thing. The second thing, when you're getting your sessions done, and I say this in every God blessed video, guys, they don't hurt. Again, guys, look at the pressure that I'm using. Even 48 hours after surgery, yes, you may feel uncomfortable, but there should be no pain. It shouldn't hurt. That's not a thing. There's no rollers, no machines, no cavitation, none of that. So let's talk about that whole thing, right? Why does it hurt? One, the person doesn't know what they're doing. They're not certified, obviously. Um, two, cavitation massage. And I'm going to do a specific video on this too. Cavitation massage is not for after surgery, guys. Cavitation massage uses ultrasound and suction and heat to break up fat cells. Guys, we just removed all the fat cells. You have no more left. What are you doing cavitation massage for? I urge you, go Google what cavitation massage does. It literally blast the fat cells so that your body can reabsorb them, the lymph system can reabsorb them, and you pee them out. And it's supposed to make you skinnier, right? You just had all of it sucked out of your body. No. And then on top of it, if you have a fresh cut, if I take a knife and cut your hand open and give you stitches, do you think even two weeks after you're going to want somebody sucking on that and adding heat and adding all kinds of ultrasound and rubbing back and forth with a machine over it? No. So again, cavitation massage. The reason that a lot of you guys do it and the reason a lot of people say it works is for when you get fibrosis. Now, let me explain something to you. Fibrosis is not fat. Fibrosis is fibrous, thick tissue building up in your body. It's your lymph fluid that's turning from water into Play-Doh into really hard, thick, permanent Play-Doh. We had this video last week where we talk about the whole fat transfer Play-Doh thing and the lipo Play-Doh thing and how that works. Same thing, guys. That is not going to help get rid of your fibrosis. Maybe it'll help break it up. Maybe it'll help soften it, but your body's not going to eliminate all of that. You have to reverse the process. And by blasting it and raking over it, one, it's not going to be comfortable. Two, your fibrosis isn't going to go away. And three, even if it breaks up your fibrosis and smooths it out, your body's not going to reabsorb that and pee it out. So it's really never going to heal. Now, on top of that, if you're doing these cavitation massages or this wood therapy or any of these harsh, crazy things that are not true hands-on gentle manual lymphatic drainage, anything other than true hands-on manual lymphatic gentle drainage, Anything other than that kind of massage is going to ruin your results. Why? Because you're freshly cut everywhere. Deep pressure. Again, cutting your hand open with a knife. Deep pressure, friction, heat, rubbing, 
oil, constant back and forth motion, anything is going to irritate your body. It's a fresh wound. It is then going to blast that scab right open because your whole body, right? You just got lipo everywhere. This whole thing is now one big scab trying to heal internally. It's going to blast at that tissue. It's going to make it inflamed. It's going to cause you to swell. And if it doesn't cause you to swell, it's going to cause fibrosis and cause your skin to not heal properly. Because there is a skin aspect where the skin needs to reattach and heal to the new tissue once everything heals inside. So again, guys, gentle, true, water style, hands-on, manual lymphatic drainage. I cannot say it enough. So there is that. Now, when you're going to a place, just because... They do manual lymphatic drainage does not mean they do post-op manual lymphatic drainage. The therapist has to know, one, where to push the fluid. Because if you're pushing that fluid into an area where there's already fluid, it's going to create problems. Problems like what? Problems like a seroma. What is a seroma? A seroma is a pocket of fluid. What do doctors do for seromas? They stick a needle in there and try to drain it, right? Sometimes you see that yellowish fluid come out. That's great. But that's not going to help it heal. Just because you drain a seroma does not mean it's going to heal properly. That is still a pocket that will fill up again if you don't heal it and take care of it properly, which is why we do wound care and we do all of that at Amari because it's part and parcel with your lymphatic massages. Now that leads me into my next point. Guys, I understand these massages are super important. Trust me, I have an entire business on it. But if you are not doing the aftercare, if you are not in a proper garment, we just got finished, well, I just got finished, designing my line of garments specifically constructed for plastic surgery for BDLs, lipo, and tummy tucks. There are specific garments for specific things. I have videos on this, several of them. Do not play Russian roulette with your garment. You are playing Russian roulette with your body. You need to make sure the garment that you have is cut for your surgery, number one. Number two, you need to make sure that you have the proper supplies for your wound care. Just because you're using dial, and by the way, we say do not use dial and do not use HippoCleanse, after five days post-op because it rips up your skin and it causes your garment to give you even more garment burn because your skin is so fragile and you're not taking care of it. Definitely don't use Dove, guys. Why are you using Dove after surgery? That is not okay. That is not medically anywhere okay. Please do not use Dove after your surgery. Please, all I'm gonna say. Um, We do have a video on the products that we use that is also in the archives, like way back in the beginning of our... um, IGTV video library. So you can go and check that out and get the supplies that we use. But if you are not using proper supplies, if you are using that white tube of Arnica gel, if you are using the Arnica tablets, which guys, again, do your research. They're just sugar pills. They have the essence of Arnica in them, but they're not the same thing. If you're not using an extra strength Arnica post-op cream like we have, It's not doing anything. You guys have to do the research. You have to do the things that are going to support your surgery and not just because you saw it on Real Self, not just because somebody talked about it on YouTube. I'm a professional. Go to a professional. I understand your doctors don't give you help, but find someone. You can always do virtuals with us. You can go find a lymphatic drainage therapist who does Vodder style hands-on MLD that is going to kind of point you in the right direction or give you some tips or whatever it is. But Just because, again, just because they do MLD doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. They have to be conscious of your surgery site. They have to be conscious of where they're moving fluid to. You have several drains in your body to move the fluid to to get it to drain properly. If they are not doing that, it can make it worse. If they're going near your fat transfer, if they're doing any of these things, if it smells fishy, then it might be fishy, guys. You got to do your research on this stuff. So when you're looking for a place, talk to them about your surgery. Ask them if they've had experience with the surgery before. Talk to them about how you can lay, how you can sit, how you can stand, what's comfortable for you. Give them instructions, guys. Just because they specialize in manual lymphatic drainage does not mean they are well-equipped and qualified. Give them instructions. Take charge of the session. Take charge of your recovery. I cannot express that enough in all of my videos. So look for a place that does hands-on MLD. Look for a place that's water specialized. Make sure they're a licensed massage therapist, check their credentials, and you should need anywhere from like eight to 12. Now, anything after that is because you have a bad garment, you don't have the right supplies, something went wrong, you're not healing right, you're not eating what you should be or eating what you shouldn't be, you're not having enough water and you're still swelling. So these massages should be extremely effective, Um, which again, we don't really ever go over eight sessions. I always tell my clients we start small. We have two packs, four sessions for 480, eight sessions for 950. Um, Eight sessions is usually the, the most I will book for a client 
after their first post-op session with me. You cannot book packages until you see me first because we need to know that you're cleared to do the rest of your massages. So I don't usually ever book anything after that. Now, after clients have done their eight, they'll usually book another post-op with me, come back, we'll check it out. And if I say, hey, you know what? You really don't need them. But if you want to get this done faster and this little bit of swelling is still bothering you, do another four. And that's it. I have never had anyone in my five years of having my offices do anything more than 12. Because again, it's a combination approach. It's the garment, it's the foams, it's the diet, it's the supplies, it's at-home care on top of the massages. Your massages, and the whole reason I wanted to create this video, your massages are not the end all and be all of your recovery. You cannot get your massages and not wear your garment. You cannot wear your garment, come in, get all your supplies, get your garment, get fitted for your foams, and then never come in for your massages. It will not work. It's not a one-time thing. You guys have to do this regularly. It's a combination approach. So your garment keeps the swelling down. Your foams keep the swelling liquid. That's great for keeping it, but you have to get it out of your body, which is what true hands-on manual lymphatic drainage does. It dilates you, so it sucks that fluid back and you pee it out. Now, if you're getting your body to suck fluid back and pee it out without having the foams in the garment, if you have fibrosis, your body can't absorb tissue. Your body can't absorb something so thick. Those vessels are only a hair thick. Yes, your lymph vessels are only a hair thick. That's it. How do you expect this to absorb fibrosis? It won't. It only absorbs liquid. That's it. So if you are not in a proper fitting garment, if you do not have the proper foams in the right place, breaking up the fibrosis, your sessions are not going to be anywhere near as effective. And this is why I don't book more than eight sessions for a client. Because if you go through eight sessions and you're still super, super hard and you are still super fibrotic, what are we doing giving you more sessions? We got to fix the problem first. Otherwise, they're not going to work. So again, your massages are not the end all and be all. You guys have to do the rest of your research and the rest of your aftercare. But if you're doing all of that and not doing your massages, that also isn't going to work. So we have to make sure we're doing all of this at once. So again, proper hands-on, Vodder style, true traditional, hands-on, gentle, manual lymphatic drainage, pumping motion only, no gliding, no lotion, no oils, no medium, no roller, no heat, no machines, no vibration plates, nothing, 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 nothing other than actual hands-on pumping motion, manual lymphatic drainage. One of these days, I will record a video, I'll probably get my assistant Danny to help me, um, of me actually doing a full body manual lymphatic drainage on someone so that you guys can see it. Um, one of these days. <laughs> but it should be every time full body. If somebody is only working on a specific part of your body and not the rest, the lymph vessels in that area and the swelling in that area, your lymphatic load, your body's not going to be able to handle the lymphatic load of fluid that you have inside of you in that one area if we're not engaging all the vessels and all the lymph nodes throughout the rest of the body that are healthy. Because that's how we're getting your body to suck the fluid back. So if they're only working on one area and that's it, no go. They're not doing anything. They're just pushing fluid around in that area and it's going to stay there and it's not going to go anywhere and it's not going to do anything. Or worse, it's going to become fibrotic and it's going to become thick and hard. So every session that we do, we open the three major drains, the neck, the armpits, the hips. We do a little bit on like the lower region, a little bit on the upper region of the chest, and then we dive right into where you need it the most. But again, if you are not engaging the rest of the body, the fluid's not going to be able to go out anywhere because it's not going to get into your body to be absorbed. You're just kind of pushing it around in one area. It stays there and it either doesn't do anything and gravity takes hold and it spreads or it becomes fibrotic and becomes a hard patch, which is why after those drainage massages, I have seen, I will say 97%, there's like a small 3% of people, and this is because they don't get the massages. I get about 10 Miami people a week, if not more. You guys come from Miami, you come from Columbia, you come from DR, you come from wherever. You have open incisions still because they keep ripping you open. That's number one, that's a site for an infection. Number two, the hardness that you get, that like kangaroo pouch hardness at the bottom of your stomach, that lip of super hard skin and super hard tissue, or in your back, where you've got that big swollen patch in your back, that's because of what they're doing to you. Again, they're doing this like squeezy, like the squeeze lady, whatever she's called, that whole thing, all they're doing is pushing fluid into a centralized area, and it's getting trapped there. And then because it's been trapped there, it's getting held and hard and thick and congealed and fibrous and becoming fibrosis. And that's how that happens. So again, 
These are how these things go. And then on top of that, if you have a bad garment, it's going to irritate your skin even more, give you garment burn, your skin's going to start developing wounds, and on top of that, you're going to wind up with this giant thick hard patch because, again, the garment and the foams hold. So if you're pushing everything into a centralized area and then you're in a garment that holds, it's going to start to congeal and get thick and become permanent fibrosis or hard spots or even seromas if they don't get hard and it becomes a giant pocket of fluid or a pouch of fluid. So those massages are extremely dangerous. So many people have died from them. Do your research. So many people have died from the massages because people, oh my God, and all the time. Again, another thing, 98% of people that come into my office from Miami, oh, I'm anemic. Oh, I passed out on the table. Oh, when they took my garment off, I passed out. I had a client last week. Last thing I'm gonna say, because this is a very long video. I had a client last week literally come in in tears because she was in a recovery house and she was getting up to go to the bathroom and no one was behind her helping her and she blacked out. She doesn't remember. She remembers waking up on the floor. She got a BBL and lipo, 360. She fell back. She smashed her head. They didn't take her to the hospital. She wasn't on any medications. They didn't check her blood work. They didn't check to see if she was anemic. They just sent her home. And that was it. And she came home and the first thing she did was come and see me. And her BBL, because of the garment, but also because of the fall, flat, completely. And nobody checked her. Nobody took her to the hospital. Nobody asked her if she had a concussion. She was throwing up, like the whole thing. So that's super dangerous. Um, but that whole anemia and passing out thing and fainting and feeling dizzy and that whole thing that you guys got going on in Miami, yeah, that's also because you're losing a lot of blood. And you're losing a lot of blood because of those drainage massages where you literally have blood pouring out of you. Now, when is that helpful? So when doctors do a tummy tuck and they put in a drain, why do they do that? Drains are meant to get the excess blood out of your body so it doesn't turn black and cause an infection. Those drainage massages should not happen after your incisions are closed. If they are happening, it's because they're trying to get the excess blood out of your body so it doesn't become black. And that's where you get the relief from. That's a totally different story. That's fine. But if they're cutting open your incisions and continually raking through you, where you hear, hear girls screaming in the other room or you're screaming because you're in that much pain, that is dangerous, that is hazardous to your health, and that is so not okay for your healing and your recovery at all. That is not what you want. If you walk into a massage session after surgery and it is rough or there are machines or they're using oils or they're using lotions or they're really not knowledgeable about post-op at all, you guys got to go somewhere else. Now, in our virtual consults, because again, we're in New Jersey, so if you guys aren't in our virtual consults, I will literally, before the consult, look up a list of places. I will go through and check all of them for you and give you the one that is the best rated for what you need for your surgery with the experience, with the technique, with all of that. I will verify the source before you book your sessions. Now, consecutive sessions. How does this work? So how many sessions should you get and how often? Now, consecutive means, I don't know why when I say this, nobody understands. I'll say it like five times and you guys will be like at the end of the session, okay, so how many sessions do I need? And like, okay, so like once a week, consecutive guys means every day in a row consecutive so you want to cluster book your appointments as much as possible because your lymph vessels stay dilated from 24 to 48 hours so what we want to do is make sure that your vessels are staying super super open so you're pumping out the most amount of fluid but also you're in your garment you're in your foams it's working on your body keeping you liquid the quicker we get that liquid out of your body the less chance for fibrosis the less chance for things to go wrong and the more relief you're going to feel and on top of that the quicker your results are going to heal people wait eight months nine months a year for their results because they're still swelling if we get the swelling off you see your results instantly and that's it because the cut is underneath and that because of the cut, you have all this swelling on top. As the swelling comes down, you start to see where your body actually is, which is why when you guys walk into my office and you're like, oh my God, I look terrible. I'm like, yeah, but your surgery looks great. Like your cut looks awesome because I can see past the swelling to where the cannula actually went and where the cuts were actually done. And that's also why when you go to your plastic surgeon for your follow-ups, they say, oh, you look great because they're not looking at your swelling. They're looking at the cut. They're looking at your actual results because they can see it. Whereas you guys are looking at your body and you're like, I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. This is not what I wanted. And I'm four weeks out and I still don't look okay. Well, yes, you shouldn't really have still like massive swelling after four weeks. But most of the times you do because we're not doing aftercare. We don't have the right sources or whatever it is. So when we get that swelling out, you will see your results immediately. And if there is a problem at that point, then we can be with your doctor and do a follow-up and, and 
work on fixing it. But the reason that's one of the reasons we do our sessions cluster booked as much as possible. So for one week, for the other week, if you're doing an eight pack, um, or we try to get you in, you know, as close together as possible every day in a row, because that of the whole results thing, but also your pain tolerance, guys, when you are in pain, your body inflames and swells. So your skin's going to be sensitive. Fibrosis hurts um, because it's thick and hard and it's tender and it makes your skin hurt. And on top of that, you have all that swelling sitting on your nerves. So as you go through your sessions, as you wear your foams, as you wear your garment, you're going to feel kind of like more pain. You're going to feel more sore. It's going to hurt more when you're wearing your garment and stuff. Why? Because the swelling is coming off your nerves. And as the swelling comes off your nerves, you start to feel everything again. So you're feeling the pricking, the pins and needles, the itching, the the soreness like you got beat with a baseball bat gets worse and worse and worse because that swelling isn't there to cushion you anymore. It's coming down. Your body's absorbing it. So as it's doing that, you're starting to feel everything again, which is why we have you on our extra strength um, post-op cream but with the Arnica and Calendula and Echinacea and all that stuff that it's got in it. That's why I, I specifically chose that cream is because it helps break up the fibrosis, but it also helps with your skin. It's a topical analgesic. So what that means is it stops pain directly on the skin. So all of that stuff that you're feeling as your swelling's coming off of your body is happening in real time, like super, super rapid, super quick, whereas that would usually take six to eight months because you've got all that cushion of swelling so you're not really going to feel all of that whereas now you're speeding up the process like crazy you're going to feel everything and you're going to feel it like really really quick but that also means it's going to go away really quick so you're flying through that entire recovery process so you're going to have all of those feelings um all of the uncomfortable ones unfortunately but they go really quick they pass literally in the matter of days if you're doing it with someone like us that's certified and knows what they're doing in our post-op specialists so that's another reason we do them back to back because the quicker we can get you through that the less pain you're going to be in less pain you're going to feel the better you're going to feel the better your body is going to heal so the reasons we do them back to back, one, dilated lymph vessels. It makes sure that your body gets everything out as quick as possible. Two, pain tolerance. We get you through that ugly um, healing phase. And by the way, I don't know if anybody knows this, but our slogan, um, which we're putting everywhere now, especially on the um, white label bags for the garment, our slogan is helping you navigate the ugly side of plastic surgery because guys, this shit is ugly. Like, excuse my French, but it's fucking gross. Like your body is changing. You got fibrosis. You got swelling. You don't know when you can shower. You got leaking incisions and all kinds of stuff. Like it's not pretty guys. What we deal with is so not pretty. Um, and you guys are always like, I think it's so cute when you come in and you're so embarrassed because you're like, I'm so sorry. I haven't shaved. And I'm like, you honestly think that's the worst thing I've seen this week is your hairy legs. Okay. You can be embarrassed. It's fine. But that is not the most gross thing that I've seen this week. But navigating the ugly side of plastic surgery, because guys, that rapid healing phase that you go through with us, it can be ugly. It can be brutal. It can suck. But it happens in literally a matter of two weeks, and then you're done. And then it's over. Rather than being in pain and uncomfortable and swollen and sore and in a garment for months, for three months, for six months, it literally happens in two weeks. Our before and afters eight sessions consecutively in a row, those like those sessions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, those that you see on there, guys, those are eight days in a row. Those are literally a matter of days. It's not that long. So again, doing them consecutively gets you through that faster and gets you out of the garment quicker. That's my last point about that. So why do we wear the garment? Again, to, to hold everything. But what if there's nothing to hold? What if we get that swelling out and it's gone? then you're out of your garment. Unless you're in a fat transfer BBL type situation or a breast implant type situation where we need things to heal like that um, and stick, then you have to stay in it a little bit longer. But if you're getting lipo or a tummy tuck, once you heal, once your body is solid and you're good, which is usually anywhere from four weeks to six weeks, you're out of that garment and it's done. You don't need it anymore. Bye. The end. Done. No more garment. No more foams. No more anything. So the quicker we get your sessions done, the quicker you get out of the garment. And that's one of the number one things that everybody asks me is when can I be done wearing my garment? Well, when you have no fibrosis, when you have no swelling, when your skin is completely reattached, when you have no soreness, no bruising, your incisions are completely healed. And here's another thing. Side note. Stop putting scar tape on your scabs. Stop putting scar cream on your scabs. Guys, if you have a scab, if you have a stitch, if it is not full on skin, completely closed, I'm not even pink, like completely closed, do not use scar stuff. It will make you purple, it will invert your scar, it'll invert your scab, and you're not gonna heal right, and it's gonna look gross. Stop putting scar stuff on you if you have scabs and incisions. I know we wanna get this done as soon as possible, but guys, stop doing that. 
Stop it. So getting out of the garment as quick as we can, as quick as we get your sessions done, as quick as your swelling goes down, your fibrosis, no scabs, no scars, no incisions, everything is healed and you are perfectly fine. Then you can ditch the garment and the foams and be completely out of it because your skin also needs, when you're in a garment with foams, your skin really isn't moving that much. Yes, you're up and you're moving and you're active, but it doesn't have this free movement where I can move my skin like this. So your body needs to be able to do that. Your skin needs to be able to do that and reattach to the tissue and build back up those proteins and all those little anchoring filaments so that it can move freely again and be like nice and, and tight skin. And if you're in a garment all the time, that can work against you. I've seen that happen too, where you guys will get addicted to your massages or get addicted to your garment and you're six months out and you don't need it and your skin looks all wrinkly and weird and like saggy and strange and you don't have any swelling, but your skin doesn't heal right because it's not getting air. It's not moving naturally. Your muscles and that connective tissue isn't gonna be as strong because you're relying on the garment too much. So the quicker we get out of those sessions, the quicker we get out of the garment, the quicker that we heal, the quicker your incisions close. So last point about this whole like, sessions thing if you have pressure like this up against your incision right it's not going to heal right because it's being pulled open by the swelling if we take that swelling away it comes together naturally and it heals smoother and it heals cleaner and it heals in a thin line without any stretching without any purple around it or red around it or cracking skin around it so the quicker we do those sessions the better your incisions are going to heal and you're not going to scar anywhere near as much you might have a tiny little scar but if that that skin isn't being stretched and pulled your body doesn't have to create as much thick fibrous tissue if it's together your body just heals and closes it up really really quick so again if you have incisions that are having trouble closing, you need to be getting massages, like hands-on true Vater style MLD. Like you have to be getting those because it's gonna help those close a lot more, especially if you had a tummy tuck, especially if you had skin removal, breast augmentation. Guys, you're breathing and your ribs all the time under here, when you inhale, it pulls. You see my shirt pull and when you exhale, it relaxes. You're breathing all the time. If When you get breast implants or breast augmentation or anything on your breasts done, all of that skin is usually really tight and you're breathing and it's constantly pulling and then you've got swelling on top of that constantly pulling the most common incisions that i see rip open are not tummy tucks they're right underneath they're that staple not staple sorry if god if they ever use staples on a breast any kind of breast reconstruction augment anything run in the other direction don't ever let them use staples on you you will not heal right um been down that road seen it done it please don't do that i've had too many clients with that no no staples in the boobs please um but that anchoring stitch that they have under here the one that they usually remove that's what i see bust open the most why moisture number one number two swelling right underneath here pulling it open and number three your garment will hit right under here a sports bra any kind of compression will hit right under here and if it's swollen it's gonna rub and it's gonna cause that to rip open so again, we do the MLD as quick and as much in a row as we can. Your session should be about 45 minutes, guys. Anybody who's doing an hour and a half lymphatic massage on you is not doing manual lymphatic drainage. They're doing lymphatic massage and they're rubbing your skin. That's not how that works. Once your system is dilated, your system takes over. Anything more than 45, anything between... 35 to 40 minutes of manual lymphatic drainage is more than enough for your body post-op if they're doing true hands-on Vater style manual lymphatic drainage where they're engaging your body to dilate and suck that fluid back because I can't push fluid into your body. I can open the valve and cause a suction motion to happen where your body sucks the fluid back. But no therapist is gonna be able to squish fluid into your body. That is not how that works. And fluid shouldn't be squished out of your body either. So anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes of hands-on MLD, which is why in my post-op sessions, we take about 10 to 15 minutes going over garment, foams, sessions, and scheduling at the end. You take about five to six to seven minutes filling out paperwork. Then we spend a lot of time talking. I talk a lot while you're on the table so that I'm working on you and fill you guys in. But the consult itself, because it's the first time I'm seeing you, I don't know how your body's gonna handle it. I don't know how your body's gonna react. I don't know your pain tolerance. I haven't met you. I don't know what surgery you had. You, Your body physically cannot handle 45 minutes of MLD. Even if you're six months out, if you haven't had any treatment or incorrect treatment for your post-op, you cannot handle more than 40 minutes at most of lymphatic drainage. So anybody who's doing an hour and a half lymph drainage on you is not, not doing what they should. So again, it should be somewhere from 30 to 45 minutes to 50 minutes of lymph drainage during your session, true hands-on Vater style MLD to get that fluid to get sucked back into the body. 
Okay guys, I have talked enough in this video. I think this is the longest video I've done in a very long time. Thank you guys for watching so much. This will be up on my IGTV right now. Um, and if you guys have questions, set up a virtual with me. Call our office, 732-841-0142. We can set up a virtual. I can answer your questions. We can do all of these things. We can help find you a place. All that great stuff. So I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and the Elizabeth office is coming soon. It is, um, I'm working on it now. It will be open in July, so we will start booking for that soon as well. Have a good rest of your night. Bye, guys.